Hello, hello. I hope you all are well. I am feeling giddy today because we are going to spend the whole day gardening and prepping our garden beds for springtime and also just get started on some other landscaping projects and dreams. And I really have been daydreaming of this day for quite some time. Our last freeze date in my particular zone, which is zone 9B, was February 14th, so Valentine's Day, which was just a couple days ago. So I've kind of just been waiting until that date approaches and then I wanted to go full send, plant all the things. So that's what we're gonna spend time doing today. And this season particularly, I really do wanna focus on florals and really creating those butterfly gardens and flower beds full of different flowers and plants that the pollinators are really attracted to and just a few that I I've had success with zinnias last season and cosmos do pretty well also and then I do want to plant quite a bit of milkweed for the monarchs so those are just a few of the the plants that are kind of on the forefront of my mind that I want to work on and try to learn about this season and just a little bit about my gardening experience if you're new here it is very limited. I am quite the novice gardener. I started our little garden in the backyard last March or April. I think it was April. Last April, we have four raised garden beds and just different plants spread out in our backyard. And we live in a suburban area. It's, it's really nice to be able to plant things in our small backyard, even though it is on the smaller side. I really am focused on maximizing the space and trying to fill in and make it as lush as possible, which that's a whole other dream. Uh, once we go out there, I'll give you a full tour of what we have planted and kind of where we're at so that we can see kind of the progress throughout the season. But I definitely have some dreams along the perimeter of our fence. So we have a fenced in backyard and we have neighbors directly side by side, super close to us. And when I take videos in the backyard, you don't really see that just because of my neighbor's privacy. I'm not going to be showing you like their property, of course, but I would love to plant some kind of plant all along the perimeter of our fence for privacy, but also just for that lush look. I'd rather look at a bunch of greenery and plants instead of just the white vinyl fence, if that makes sense. So I actually reached out to a local landscaper a few months ago and they came over to give me a quote of everything that I sort of envisioned. I tried to convey my dreams for the backyard and the quote came back over $10,000. So I definitely knew it would be expensive and it's, it is very expensive. And that's not to say I don't think that's a fair price because I do acknowledge how much manual labor garden projects and landscaping is, and then of course sourcing all of the plants. So I do realize that is a big task. And then they also quoted me for all the irrigation and figuring that out. So I do acknowledge that, but I feel inspired to try to tackle it on my own. I guess it's the independence in me, but I also feel like it would be more rewarding and we would be able to be more intentional with it because of course when you hire a landscaper, they have tons of clients and they're just trying to get the job done, even though they'll do a great job. I just feel like I am interested in the challenge of trying to tackle it on our own. So I'll kind of explain more thoughts on just the general landscaping, but for the gardening, I really do want to focus on flowers. And so like I said, we have four raised beds in the back, which this is my little garden organizer binder. We found it at the antique store and I just absolutely love it. I think it's so precious. And I made my first note in it today. I haven't written in in it except this morning was the first time and i really do want to focus on planting zinnias cosmos milkweed other native florida wildflowers and i want to be able to have just a lot of different flowers to choose from so that we can have fresh cut flowers in our home and then also to have available as gifts for friends and family so that's my my overall goal for the spring gardening season and yesterday I was researching for another project that I'm working on and I randomly came, came across this spring gardening class in my area and I took that as a sign because I already 
marked my calendar and dedicated this day to gardening and the class is today this afternoon so I signed up and we'll be going to that around 2 p.m. so I'll give you all of the details I've never been to a class at this location before but it's fun because it's actually through the University of Florida which is where I went to college and I've been interested in taking classes about horticulture and I just love learning about nature, plants, gardening, animals, all of that. So I'm really excited to see how it goes. Hopefully it'll add some value and it'll be a knowledgeable experience. So I'll give you all the details of that, but that's a little rundown of our plans for today, but I'm excited to spend time with you all. Okay, here's a tour of what we're working with. First of all, I wanna highlight my favorite garden project we've ever worked on, and that is this Star Jasmine crisscross Trellis. This is one of my absolute favorite decisions we've made with our house was to plant this, and it has grown so quickly. We've lived in this home for two years, and we did this probably like eight months into when we lived in our home, maybe six months actually, we did it pretty quickly. So it's about a year and a half old and it has grown so much. I'll insert some photos of what it looked like when we first planted it and the date that we first planted it, but it is just doing really well. I do need to train the top. As you can see, it'll start crawling into the roof, which this is our garage. So we would probably not plant something like this at our actual home, but since this is our garage and, um, Thankfully, the, the star jasmine trellis is non-invasive, so even though you see it crawling into the top up there, it'll just die off. It won't keep growing, and you know we don't worry about it messing up the foundation or anything like that, so I really, really recommend star jasmine, and it'll start blooming in the spring as well, so excited to see that. And then this is our Meyer lemon tree, which has a lot of fruit right now. It's doing really well, and we actually need to fertilize it today. So I need to get out the fertilizer and fertilize it. We fertilize it four times a year and I bought fertilizer from a local citrus nursery. So it smells terrible, the fertilizer I bought, but clearly it loves it. And we have a lot of new growth, which I'm excited about. I hope that it'll start growing more fruit because as you can see, basically all the lemons are ready to pick, but I hope it'll start growing new fruit and we can see some little blooms coming in up here. So that's encouraging. We love to see that. So that's one of our first things on the agenda is to fertilize our lemon tree. And then this is what I'm really sad about. This is our bougainvillea that we planted about a year ago and it is doing terrible. And this is all of a sudden, it was doing really, really well for the whole year. And then of course, right before it's supposed to get all of the colorful pink bracts, all of the leaves, basically all of the leaves just fell down. You can see all of these old, old leaves and I'm just so confused. I do not know what happened. It might be because it it froze, I don't know. I was out of town in California one weekend. I came home and it was just dropping leaves like crazy. As you can see, there's still some little, <laughs> there's some hope, I guess. There's some bracts here and some green leaves and it is growing quite quickly, so that's good. You can see some new growth over here as well, so. I am still hoping that it'll recover. I'm just very confused why this happened because it, it wasn't overwatered and I don't think it was underwatered because it really doesn't need that much water. So I really don't know, but yeah, just really hoping that it continues to heal. And it has changed quite a bit, even just in the past couple of days, like it keeps growing little, little sprouts. So. I'm hopeful, but that was definitely a bit disheartening. And then this is our mint. When we first planted it, we planted it with some other herbs, with some basil, cilantro, but it, would it was just taking over the garden bed, so it's doing a lot better on its own, and it's a lot better for the other plants that it's not sharing a bed. So we have that, and then this is our flower bed, which it's doing okay. I definitely need to 
do better about consistently watering my beds, which after today, I'm gonna be coming out here every morning, giving it a nice peruse and watering, so it'll become more of my routine, but we have this cute little Cosmo blooming, so that's fun. This is just a little wildflower mix, so it's a surprise what will bloom next. And then this is lavender that's doing really badly. It's really thirsty, so we need to water this. This is our milkweed that's in bloom. Very exciting. We have the milkweed growing quite a bit, so hopefully that'll continue to grow and bloom because we're gonna need a lot for the butterflies. And then this is our pepper bed, which is doing okay. I've harvested some peppers. I need to take this down because this is just rotting like crazy, so I need to prune this and then I don't know what this is but this kind of plant keeps growing around our peppers so we have a little pepper here but by the base of the pepper is I don't know if that's a weed I think it is I'm just gonna take it out and then we have a carrot right here a tiny baby carrot so maybe I'll just leave that in for a bit and harvest that <laughs> in a few weeks but yeah, our peppers are doing okay. Have a little jalapeno over here. Cute, cute, cute. Um, but yeah, I definitely should add some more fertilizer in there to give them more nutrients. And then we have this little bloom over here. I need to prune back this flower plant, but it has a cute little bloom, which is nice. Have some cilantro, have some basil, but I really do wanna just take out this basil plant and plant some fresh organic basil because I've had this plant for maybe four years now, maybe even over four years. I had it in our apartment in a little pot, but then I planted it in this bed. But as you can see, it's just like quite outgrown, especially near the bottom. It's just having that bark-like bark base. So we might wanna just start from fresh, but I'll harvest the top of the basil if we do plan to do that. And then this is our lettuce that does not look like lettuce at all. I just kind of let this go because the lettuce, it did well, but it was just super bitter because I planted it pretty early in the season and it just becomes very bitter because of um, the heat and the humidity that we have in Florida. So I think next year if I want to do lettuce again, I'll plant it a little later in the season, but it's kind of cute. It's actually planting there's little baby sprouts of lettuce coming in here so that's really cool to see it's kind of restarting its cycle but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and peel all of that back but I definitely want to keep our kale our kale is doing amazing and I love to put this in smoothies I really don't like to make kale salads that often but it's really perfect for smoothies and super nutrient dense so we'll keep that and then I'll have to look at what's a good companion for kale I wonder if there's a good flower that would be nice to put here but now that I see all these baby lettuce sprouts I'm kind of interested in maybe trying again with the lettuce in the cooler months so we'll sit on that for a bit but I definitely want to pull out all of these overgrown bolting lettuce sprouts and then over here on our side yard this is our problem area of our yard it's kind of a useless Space that I'm interested in maximizing and as you can see these bushes we have along the perimeter of our home are doing terrible so we kind of just want to pull these out and just use this more as a space to maybe add a table maybe add some more seating and we need to replant the grass here because it's just a bunch of dirt because it's not been doing well and my idea would be to, along our fence, have a bunch of different plants to, again, create that privacy, but also create that lush looking space so that we would have that beautiful greenery and life instead of just the uh, vinyl fence. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm interested in, but of course that'll be a really big project.
we've been making good progress and I'm gonna wait till after my class this afternoon to see if I should add anything to the soil before going ahead and planting some new seeds so we'll wait till after but we have some good prep gonna take this basil that we pruned off from the top and rinse it off and then uh, dry it out for dried basil for seasoning so that'll be a good use for it and then we'll get some fresh organic basil plants to plant there and then this is a project that I'm really excited about but these little I don't know what you would call them just mulch beds I suppose they have pine straw we are going to put soil all on the top of this I'll probably take out some of the pine straw and then put soil all along here and all along there and the plan is to plant flowers so it's at the edge of our porch and I just think that would look so beautiful hopefully it'll work out okay but I think I'll definitely need to add some soil because this sandy clay like soil probably isn't the most nutritious for the new flower sprouts so that's a project that I'm really excited about and hopefully we'll have some time to work on later today. We are packing up to get ready for our class. I am so excited. It feels like the first day of school. This class is an hour and a half too. so pretty lengthy class. I'm so interested in what we will cover and what it'll be like, who will be there. I, I'm so intrigued. So I packed a bag. I'm wearing a sweater too and jeans because at least when I was in school, I feel like I always got so chilly in the auditoriums and stuff. So we're going to have our layers in case. And then I have a notebook. I also brought the seeds I have just in case. I don't know why. I mean, Maybe someone will want to do a seed exchange. Who knows? And also, because I'm thinking I'll go to the garden center after my class in case there's any suggested supplies or fertilizers or compost, whatever it may be, then I can pick that up and then we can start creating the beds alongside our porch as well as just prepping the raised beds. So I think that'll be our order of events. And then I have our garden organizer, my kombucha, water, and we're all set, good to go. And I have just been loving this day so, so much. I feel like for the past week or so, I've just been in my head so much and I feel like I've had a difficult time finding balance and just feeling grounded and even just a couple hours outside in the sun, using my hands to work on the garden. It has just been so refreshing and life-giving and I'm just, Really looking forward to incorporating this back into my routine again and spending time in the garden. It's just, again, really fills me with so much joy and balance and peace. So feeling very thankful for today and all that's yet to come. back home from school it was a fabulous experience I'm so glad I went it was really really lovely the teacher was really knowledgeable and the best part is his last name is gardener and he teaches classes about gardening it's just perfect I just loved that and yeah I took a lot of notes here's kind of some of my main takeaways Something that I made note of last year after my first season of gardening that I sort of have forgotten or neglected is just how much I need to water my plants. 
for many different gardening zones, you kind of have a fear of overwatering because you really don't want that root rot and you don't want your plants to have wet feet, which means that their roots are just kind of in the wet soil. But with Florida, since it's so warm here and this time of year, it's not as humid. It's still humid relatively, but it's not as humid. So my plants are just thirsty. They're really, really thirsty. Even my indoor plants, I need to just be more routine with watering and making sure that they're getting enough to drink. So that's a big takeaway that I really need to ingrain in my, again, routine, but just in my gardening habits. And then I also want to do better about making DIY compost. So using coffee grounds or eggshells or banana peels, anything like that to add more nutrients within my soil. I feel like it's just, why not? Why not give those waste products another life and they add vitamins to your soil. So I also want to try to do that more. And it's just really good to know that I have this resource, the UFIFAS locations. It's really nice to have them because they have a plant clinic and they really can help identify or help you identify different problems with your soil or the elements that factor into your growing methods. So it's really great to have them as a resource and they can test your soil. So that's good to know. And in those, um, it's not really a garden bed, but in that little section by the porch where I wanna plant a lot of flowers, we have pine straw right there, which pine straw actually makes your soil more acidic. So I learned that. So I'm going to try, which it's actually, what did they, what did they say? They said um, slightly acidic soil is actually helpful. So it's best for your soil to be slightly acidic. Okay, we're getting really technical here, but it's just fascinating. It truly is a science. But I'm gonna go ahead and clear that section and pull away all those pine straws because I was thinking, oh, I'll just put the soil on top of that, which it probably would be fine because it, it is better to have slightly acidic soil, but I'm just gonna go ahead and clear it out a bit and uh, bring the pine straws to other different beds where I'm not gonna plant anything. And I went to the hardware store and got two bags of soil and I'm just gonna dump that soil along the edge and then we'll plant our seeds in the morning. but we might need to add a little fence <laughs> fence border or something to keep his little paws out but I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens and mix in some of this mushroom compost in these little beds that we created and then also in my raised garden beds over there. So I'll just mix that in. It said vegetable and flower gardens spread a three inch thickness evenly over area to be planted. Till thoroughly to a depth of six inches prior to planting. Okay, so you use quite a bit of this. I might not use exactly that much, but be pretty generous so it's nice and nutritious for our flowers and all else that we decide to plant which I think I am gonna plant some Everglades tomatoes by our basil because I've been wanting to try out Everglades tomatoes for a while they're native to Florida they're sort of these really petite cherry like tomatoes so I've been interested in trying them so I'm gonna order some seeds for that but we really are going to focus on flowers and since we have this much room to work with i am kind of thinking of opening up more spots in the raised garden beds for more produce
had a lovely time planting our seeds this morning. I'm feeling hopeful that our little beds, our little impromptu beds around the porch will turn out really nicely and that'll be a great addition and it provides so much more gardening space to utilize that part of our backyard. So really excited about that and I'm also feeling hopeful about our bougainvillea. It's still looking very rough but every time I look at it there's new little sprouts and new bracts forming so that's making me feel better and it definitely is still a little a bit of a bummer and mystery. I don't know why that happened but We'll see, we'll hold out hope for it, but thank you so much for spending this time gardening with me. We definitely have a lot more garden projects up our sleeves, so lots to look forward to, but I so appreciate you all and cannot wait to see you next. Bye.